Before we get started, it's time once again to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Today, our presence online is increasing rapidly, and if you are someone like me whose work is primarily through the internet, it is only natural that we bolster our defenses when we do go online. This is something that can be achieved by having a VPN through Surfshark. A VPN is a virtual private network, which is a fantastic way to keep your time on the internet safe and secure. But through using a VPN through Surfshark, there are also other benefits too, like being able to change the region in which you are accessing the internet from, making it so that you can view region-locked content on various different streaming platforms. Because of all this, I extremely recommend getting your own VPN, and right now is a fantastic time to try it out, as if you do so now through Surfshark and use the promo code SHOGUNATE, you can receive 83% off and your first 3 months free. So what are you waiting for? Use the link down in the description and start reaping the benefits of having your very own VPN. But with that said, let's get on to the video. Well, at last it has been decided. My Patreon supporters have voted this month for me to cover one of the most famous and iconic samurai families of all time, the Sanada. A clan whose very existence is tethered tightly to the story and outcome of the Sengoku era, with famous figures such as Sanada Masayuki, Nobuyuki, and most importantly Nobushige, known today as Yukimura. They have become extremely popular in Japan and among fans of samurai history abroad, and are even one of my personal favorites as well. In this video, we will seek to cover it all, from their humble origins to their prime, and then finally to Yukimura's glorious last charge during the Siege of Osaka. But it doesn't stop there. The presence of the Sanada can still be felt heavily in Japan today, so we will also look deeper to explore their lasting legacy as well. But before we dive in, I feel it is important to once again address, if you like these Samurai Clan history videos and want an actual say into what clans I cover going forward, please consider subscribing to my Patreon, where joining at any tier will give you access to exclusive polls like the ones I do here to decide my clan history videos. You can even message me to suggest clans for me to put into each month's poll. Every time I upload one of these, I get a ton of comments where people are asking me to cover specific clans, but the decision ultimately rests with my Patreon supporters, so unfortunately I can't take anyone else's suggestions into account. Like I do with all of my clan history videos, you can find a link to my Patreon down below. Please consider joining up if you want a say in which clan I cover next. And with that said, let's dive in to the history of the Sanada. The origins of the Sanada family are quite fascinating, as their obscure early family tree causes them to appear as a name that was born of the Sengoku period. In actuality, through most English sources and even plenty of translated Japanese sources, although it is unclear to discern when the name actually came into being, the first real figure that we start to see bear the name is usually a samurai called Sanada Yorimasa. Yorimasa is believed to be the father, or father-in-law, of Sanada Yukitaka, a figure who we do know much more about. Because of this, we are going to start the story off with him instead. Sanada Yukitaka, also known as Yukitsuna, was a samurai in service to the Uno clan in northern Shinano province. Whether or not he was directly descended from the Uno or married into them is still a matter of debate. Whatever the case, it is safe to assume that the Uno was sort of the predecessor to the Sanada that would come later. The Uno's Kamon is believed to be similar or perhaps even identical to the one that would later famously be associated with the Sanada themselves. This Kamon would eventually come to be known as the Sanada Rokumonsen, the six coins of the Sanada. Although the imagery of the coin itself should not be solely attributed to the Sanada alone, as it had become a symbol derived from China. The coin was used to represent wealth, but the six coins together are believed to symbolize the fare that must be paid by the dead in order to cross the river Sanzu into the afterlife. But getting back to the Uno clan, during the Sengoku Jidai, their home in Shinano province was chaotic, as the province itself was on the larger side and consisted of a number of minor families all vying for power within it. 
During the early Sengoku period, the expanding power of the Murakami and other Shinano clans led to the Uno being uprooted from their ancestral homeland and sent into exile. However, they would not remain gone forever, as by the 1540s, Takeda Harunobu, later known as Shingen, had assumed leadership over the Takeda family, and had embarked on a long campaign to invade Shinano and pacify its many minor lords. It is finally here we see the re-emergence of those descended from the Uno, specifically Sanada Yukitaka, who would swear loyalty to Takeda Shingen and join his march northward, with Yukitaka on a quest for vengeance against those who had stolen his ancestral land. It is unknown when Yukitaka officially joined up with the Takeda, but it appears to have been at some point between 1544 and 1549. Being a native of Shinano, Yukitaka was an invaluable element to the Takeda campaign and would serve as a member of the Takeda army's advance guard. He would later also be credited with being one of the famous 24 generals of Takeda Shingen. By the early 1550s, through the Takeda forward push into northern Shinano, Yukitaka would finally recover territory near Toishi which Shingen would bestow upon him for his service. It is really here that we finally see the start of the Sanada clan that we would come to know. In time, Yukitaka would have a number of children, including sons Sanada Nobutsuna, Masateru, and Masayuki. Although there does appear to be other brothers and sisters as well, instead we are going to just focus on these. The three mentioned sons would each grow into fine warriors, who too would come to serve the Takeda clan under their father. Yet Yukitaka would continue to lead the family through the rest of the 1550s and into the 1560s, which would come to encompass the extremely significant battles of Kawanakajima, which took place in northern Shinano between the forces of Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kenshin. The Sanada would even come to play a part in the momentous fourth battle that occurred in 1561. Although around six years later, with Yukitaka getting older in age, he would decide to step back as leader of the family and transfer power over to his eldest son, Nobutsuna. Throughout the following years, Yukitaka took a backseat to politics, yet still offered his opinion and guidance when needed. And by 1574, he would at last pass away peacefully, having recovered territory for his family in Shinano and having seen the Takeda clan through their prime. However, the famous Takeda Shingen had also died one year earlier in 1573, leaving his son Katsuyori at the head of the family. Eager to prove himself, by 1575, Takeda Katsuyori would set out on a new campaign against the Oda and Tokugawa, a war his father had begun years ago to some success. Yet with Katsuyori wishing to demonstrate his own resolve, he would lead the Takeda clan into their greatest defeat at the Battle of Nagashino where the forces of Oda Nobunaga and Tokugawa Ieyasu would ultimately crush and cripple the Takeda army and their high command. It was here both Yukitaka's eldest sons, Nobutsuna and Masateru, would be slain in combat, leaving the still surviving third son, Sanada Masayuki, to inherit leadership of the family upon their deaths. And although Masayuki had not been the eldest son or perhaps the most favored to lead the clan initially, as we will come to see, there was no better choice to lead the family from here on out, as Masayuki would prove himself to be a strategic genius. Following the Battle of Nagashino, Masayuki would stick faithfully by Takeda Katsuyori, who now found himself in an ever-weakened position. It was only a matter of time before the Oda and Tokugawa moved in to deal the death blow to the Takeda. Yet, for seven years, they lived on, and it was during this time that we see one of Masayuki's first military successes, as he was tasked with invading Kotsuke province and seizing Numata castle. Finally, by 1582, Oda Nobunaga set out to destroy the Takeda once and for all. In the face of the incoming Oda tide, the Takeda began to splinter as lords began to break away smelling blood in the water, and thus pledging themselves to either the Oda or other powerful surrounding clans. Still, Masayuki remained loyal, and even desperately pleaded for his lord Katsuyori to flee north and take refuge with him where the Takeda could live on and perhaps later strike out once more. However, Katsuyori ended up refusing. Surrounded and betrayed by those loyal to him in Kai, Katsuyori and his family would kill themselves following their defeat at the Battle of Tenmokuzan. With the Takeda clan snuffed out for good, Masayuki became an independent lord. 
Yet, under the pressure of Nobunaga, Masayuki had little to no choice other than to swear his loyalty to the Oda in order to keep his family alive and secure. In doing this, Masayuki was placed under the direct leadership of the Oda retainer Takigawa Kazumasu, who would come to take up domain in Kotsuke. Because of this, Masayuki was ordered to relinquish control of Numata Castle over to him in exchange for retaining his own territory in Shinano. Begrudgingly, Masayuki agreed. For a moment, it appeared as if the Sanada were set to fade away into the ever-growing tide of Oda vassals. Yet, in that very same year that the Takeda were destroyed, Nobunaga would too meet his end after he was betrayed and killed by Akechi Mitsuhide at the temple of Honoji. Overnight, the Oda regime was shattered, and in the east, the former Takeda holdings were now free real estate to powerful clans such as the Tokugawa and Hojo. It is here we enter into the period known as the Tensho Jingo conflict, when the eastern territories became contested between the great clans of the region. As the Hojo began pushing up into Kotsuke, Masayuki would be instrumental in aiding his lord Takigawa Kazumasu escape the area. Yet, Masayuki would also use this moment to seize the opportunity to retake Numata Castle once more for the Sanada. Once Kazumasu was safely delivered back to the west, it was clear that Masayuki would need to pledge himself to a new lord if he was to survive much longer. Yet, the situation in the east was an extremely chaotic one, and making the right choice would be difficult. To the north sat the Uesugi, who the Sanada had previously been in conflict with, Yet now, with the Uesugi weak after Kenshin's death, they appeared more defensive than before. And to the southeast sat the Hojo, who were now aggressively expanding, as well as the Tokugawa, who had too taken the initiative and moved up to seize Kai. At first, Masayuki sought refuge with the Uesugi, pledging himself to Daimyo Uesugi Kagekatsu. Yet, when the Hojo began pushing into Shinano, Masayuki quickly broke off relations with the Uesugi and pledged himself to Hojo Ujimasa instead. Had the Hojo maintained their grip in Shinano, that is where Masayuki's loyalties would have likely remained. Yet, not soon after, support for the Tokugawa began to swell throughout the province, as the Hojo were driven back. With the Tokugawa now the dominant force in Shinano, Masayuki once again broke off relations with the Hojo this time and pledged himself at last to Tokugawa Ieyasu. Under the protection of the Tokugawa, the position and future of the Sanada seemed secure. Through Masayuki's quick thinking, he had managed to perform a series of diplomatic maneuvers that would go to guarantee the Sanada's safety during a time when minor families such as them could have easily been swallowed up by their more powerful neighbors. But while Masayuki had secured his family's future, it would ultimately come at a price. Like his previous pledge to the Oda, one of the arrangements made by the Sanada in service of the Tokugawa was that they were once again to give up Numata Castle in Kotsuke Province, handing it over to the Hojo who had taken most of the surrounding area. This was all part of larger dealings between the Tokugawa and Hojo, which had worked to secure new stability in the east in the wake of things. Although Masayuki had previously given up Numata to the Oda, this time he would not arguing that since he had taken Numata Castle first while in service to the Takeda, and later of his own volition during the flight of the Takigawa, the land was rightfully his, and Ieyasu had no authority to demand it to be relinquished. For three years, this remained the status quo, as the Hojo continually tried to wrestle the castle from Sanada hands. And during this time, Masayuki was even permitted by the Tokugawa to build a new mighty castle at Ueda, which was set to become the Sanada family's new power base. But finally, by 1585, Ieyasu officially ordered that Masayuki quit his stalling and hand over Numata. Although, Masayuki still refused, and with the Sanada now in open rebellion, Ieyasu would be forced to launch a massive attack on the Sanada's new Ueda castle. Now, faced with the Tokugawa besieging Ueda and the Hojo redoubling their efforts to take Numata, Masayuki had set himself up for a great gamble that he'd be able to hold out long enough for an intervention. Masayuki was quick to realign himself back with the Uesugi and even sent his youngest son, Nobushige, known today as Yukimura, as a political hostage in exchange for Uesugi military aid. At Ueda, Masayuki and his eldest son, Nobuyuki, would defend their homeland, while over defending Numara was Masayuki's uncle, the prominent Sanada retainer, Yazawa Yoritsuna. 
Surprisingly, against the huge numbers of the Tokugawa and Hojo that assaulted their positions, the Sanada held firm and beat back every attempt to storm their walls. And with the attackers firmly held in check, Masayuki would begin making petitions to Hashiba Hideyoshi, who had risen to power following the death of Nobunaga. Hideyoshi, who the Uesugi were also loyal to, would finally decide to intervene on the part of the Sanada, guaranteeing their independence. This scorned the Tokugawa and Hojo, and Ieyasu would not soon forget this humiliation. The Sanada, who were now set to become loyal to the Hashiba, could finally around this point be considered a daimyo, great name, clan. Quickly thereafter, Masayuki would continue to work diplomatically to further build upon his position. Although he had defeated the Tokugawa, he was able to broker a marriage between his eldest son Nobuyuki and the daughter of Honda Tadakatsu, one of Ieyasu's top retainers. While Nobushige, who had been sent to the Uesugi, would now be sent to Hideyoshi. Four years later, by 1589, a deal would finally be made between the Hojo and Sanada, one that was mediated by Hideyoshi and allowed for the transfer of Numata in exchange for other lands in Shinano that could be granted to the Sanada. Yet with the Hojo still at odds with Hashiba Hideyoshi, who was now using the name Toyotomi, they would continue to disobey and refuse to bow to him, and thus the deal would never officially work, and would later be one of the causing factors leading to the Toyotomi Siege of Odawara, which ended the Hojo in 1590. By 1594, under the wishes of Hideyoshi, Sanada Nobushige would be wed to the daughter of Otani Yoshitsuku, which would strengthen the Sanada's bond to the Toyotomi. With few records on the matter, it has been hard for researchers to discern the full extent of Nobushige's role during the Toyotomi regime, yet recent studies have indicated that he may have been made one of Hideyoshi's umamawari, horse guard. This could have paved the way for him to see service in Hideyoshi's campaigns in Japan, such as on Kyushu or at Odawara. And additionally, quotes by veterans of the Imjin War may also paint a picture of him serving in Korea as well. However, by the time of Hideyoshi's death in 1598, he had likely been assigned to operate out of Fushimi Castle. It is here Nobushige would return home to Ueda at long last, to finally be with his family once more. And with tension rising between Tokugawa Ieyasu and the Toyotomi loyalist Ishida Mitsunari, a new war appeared on the horizon. With clans across Japan pledging themselves to one faction or the other, the question would finally come to the Sanada as to who they would support. As Nobuyuki had married into the Tokugawa, and with Otani Yoshitsugu's recent decision to support Ishida Mitsunari, Nobushige now fell into that camp. Yet the decision for who the Sanada would support ultimately rested with Masayuki. Masayuki would take an interesting course of action, deciding that he and his younger son Nobushige would support the Toyotomi loyalists, while his eldest son Nobuyuki was to support the Tokugawa. This was not an unheard of thing to do for samurai lords, to split their sons between opposing sides in war so that their name would survive on no matter who was victorious, but this is perhaps the most famous example of a lord doing so. By 1600, the war between Tokugawa Ieyasu and Ishida Mitsunari was in full swing as clans across the country battled each other once more, and with Ieyasu marching back west from his capital in Edo, he had left the door open for Masayuki to strike from Ueda. To remedy this, Ieyasu had sent his son and heir, Tokugawa Hidetada, along the Nakasendo with a sizable army to mask the Sanada's Ueda castle before continuing on to link up with the main Tokugawa army in Mino. However, it is here Hidetada would decide to go glory hunting to seize Ueda once and for all. It is likely he remembered back to all those years ago when his family had been defeated by Masayuki during the first siege of Ueda in 1585, and was now trying to avenge that defeat. Yet he was no match for a seasoned commander such as Masayuki, who along with Nobushige defended Ueda brilliantly. Sanada Nobuyuki, who was accompanying Hidetada, was said to have pleaded with his father and brother to surrender the castle and spare the lives of his Sanada kinsmen but obviously Masayuki refused. And with Tokugawa casualties piling up, Hidetada was left with no other choice than to abandon the siege and rush back westward to link up with his father, which he was now very late to do. Hidetada would ultimately never arrive in time and would miss the Great Battle of Sekigahara, which Ieyasu would actually win, thanks in large part to the defectors who decided to betray Ishida Mitsunari.
Because the Toyotomi loyalists had been defeated, Masayuki and Nobushige would be exiled to Mount Koya in Ki province, while Nobuyuki would receive Ueda Castle. In the end, Masayuki's plan worked, as the Sanada would continue to rule over their ancestral homeland. With the rise of the Tokugawa Shogunate in 1603, the Edo period was set to begin, yet the Sengoku Jidai was not yet done, and one major conflict still loomed, one that Nobushige would come to play a central role in. By 1611, Masayuki finally passed away, and while he and Nobushige had still been in exile, Nobushige would soon emerge from his exile to fight once more. Tension was once again rising between the Tokugawa shogunate and the surviving heir of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a young man now by the name of Hideyori who resided in Osaka. There were a number of factors that were causing this tension, from things such as Hideyori and his mother having an obstinate nature towards the Tokugawa, to an inscription on a bell that was perceived as treacherous by the Tokugawa, to finally Hideyori amassing a new army of ronin and other loyalists in Osaka. By 1614, Ieyasu had at last set out to crush Hideyori and the Toyotomi name once and for all. This would be the start of the massive sieges of Osaka Castle. It is here Nobushige would emerge from his exile to go and aid Hideyori. During the winter siege, Nobushige had built up an additional fortress off the southwest corner of the castle. This position would be known as the Sanadamaru. With the commencement of the Tokugawa main assault, Nobushige would hold firm, repelling every attempt the Tokugawa made and even launching counterattacks against the Tokugawa lines. With Tokugawa casualties mounting, Ieyasu would finally resort to using artillery, with the Tokugawa cannons causing heavy damage, yet their forces still unable to break through the Sanadamaru. This would finally cause Ieyasu and Hideyori to arrange a truce one which allowed the Tokugawa to demand the dismantling of all outer fortifications, including the Sanadamaru. Yet, this ceasefire would be a brief one, as Ieyasu would return later the following summer to renew his assault. And although the loyalists would attempt to take the initiative to strike at the Tokugawa army before a general siege begun, they would be forced back. This would lead to the Battle of Tenoji, where Nobushige would heroically fight to the death and nearly defeat the Tokugawa army, along with even almost killing Ieyasu himself during a daring last charge. In the end, the Toyotomi were defeated and Hideyori would commit seppuku, while Nobushige would die a war hero. Of course, he was not the end of the Sanada family, as his brother Nobuyuki would continue on. Yet years after, the Sanada would be relocated from Ueda up to Matsushiro, where Nobuyuki would later die in 1658 at around the age of 92. It was in Matsushiro where the Sanada would remain throughout much of the Edo period and would later side with the emperor during the Boshin War. Yet although the Sanada name had continued, the actual bloodline likely did not, as Daimyo Sanada Yukinori had been heirless and was forced to adopt the date-born Yukimoto to succeed him, ensuring the family went on. Following the restoration of the emperor and the rise of Imperial Japan, the Sanada would be made into Kazuku, the new Japanese aristocracy, and thus today, the Sanada name still lives on. However, in modern day, the Sanada have become synonymous with that of Nobushige, who has come to be known now as Sanada Yukimura. It is Yukimura's heroism that has persisted throughout the ages, as he has become a symbol of loyalty and resolute adherence to one's own beliefs. Numerous depictions of him have appeared over the years in books, films, shows, and games and you can even find many statues of him erected across Japan, and festivals held in honor of him and the Sanada clan. He has become widely known as one of the greatest samurai who ever lived, and perhaps the fiercest samurai warrior of all time. And although the Sanada had become one of the largest thorns in Tokugawa Ieyasu's side, he not only respected Masayuki and his son Yukimura, but was also quoted to say that he would like to drink with Yukimura in the afterlife. Ultimately, the story of the Sanada is that of the Sengoku period, a clan that rose up under the vassalage of the legendary Takeda Shingen, with great leaders such as Masayuki and valiant warriors such as Yukimura. Their presence can still be felt across Japan to this day, as one of the greatest samurai families of all time. Now, I know there is plenty more I could have gotten into here regarding the Sanada, 
But this video is already long enough as it is. And besides that, the point of these Samurai Clan history videos is to simply tell you the overall story of the clan, and not get into every minute detail. But with that said, once again, if you would like a say in which clan I cover next, please consider joining the channel's Patreon. And also, don't forget to check out Surfshark as well. You can find a link down below to where you can get an amazing offer on your very own VPN. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.